Good morning, everybody. So I'm going to start uh, uh, if everybody's here. So it is sharp 11 a.m. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we'll get started. This is uh, Professor Mutlu and welcome to my um, virtual resume workshop. Um, OK, so what I would like to hear uh, today uh, simply talking about uh, um, uh, the mindset uh, behind the resume when you are preparing resume, what kind of mindset you should have. And later on, I'll, I'll show you guys the main components, main components of a resume. Later on, I'll go through in details, show you guys each and every section of the resume, how we are going to prepare it, what you should be doing. And uh, towards the end, I'll show you guys some ex examples. Some examples. As always, I'll provide my email at the end of the uh, this uh, uh, online workshop. And if you want, you can also send me your resume. I'll take a look at it. Okay. Let's uh, get started. Um, so first of all, uh, you are a student, uh, uh, a graduate student here at uh, I Global University. You have plans. You would like to get a better job. You, you have a better position in your mind. Here is the question is that whether you will be able to find a job. The question is that whether uh, you will be ready for the job. There are jobs that are available. But the question is that do you think you are ready or do you think uh, you should be able to uh, present yourself? There is no question about the market. Market will have new positions and they are going to need people like you, young um, uh, uh, and also in IT field. And then, um, uh, so we don't have question about if that will be a jobs or not. We have a question about whether you as a student will be able to ready, will be able to uh, get ready or present yourself for this uh, uh, job market positions. Okay, so number one is that uh, uh, you should have a clear uh, goal in your mind. Okay, what do you want to be? So you are taking courses, so what? Okay, that is, we call them a position. I would like to be in this position, okay? You may or may not have is that so-called dream position in your mind. If you don't have it, please uh, do your search and look around and improve your knowledge and make it. So you should have something in your mind. I would like to be like this, okay? That is, we call them a position. Position uh, with come with, of course, it, it will come with the, the uh, financial benefits as well. The education that you are getting uh, or the, the new skills that you are going to earning, it is the vehicle. It will help you to go there, okay? So you should have this relationship. You have a goal, you want to be something. That is a position that you would like to get. And this is you today. Uh, you are. Uh, you may not be ready for that position. This is why you are taking courses. The school, the school, the education is the vehicle. Is the vehicle which will help you to reach your goal. Okay. So means what? If you don't have goals, <laughs> there is no way that you will be ready for the market. So you should have something in your mind. Okay. I would like to be this and this. Maybe not just one position. You may have more than one position in mind. Okay. So uh, how you are going to reach that goal? Uh, so you have to improve, improve your skills. And this is where education comes in. So you, you, you have a clear goal, in, clear goal in mind. Your mind. Maybe one of your friends inspire you. One of uh, maybe one of the uh, articles that you read on the newspaper or on the web inspire you. I really want that position. I I can I believe I can do this. That thing has to be clarified. You have to have some kind of picture about the position in your mind. And then, uh, what, so what, uh, what uh, at that point, uh, 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 if you have that uh, mindset, if you have mindset now, you are ready for the, the process, okay? The main point is that, and some people I know missing, they're just focusing on the, the, the formatting of the resume. Formatting of the resume, the, the components of the resume, that is the easy part. This is the difficult part, okay? So, uh, it is, you know, it is up to you. But if you haven't made your decision about what is your future plan, what you are, where you are going to be, you are wasting your time. Okay, clear. So um, just uh, try to figure out what is going to be next step in your life. That is going to be something reachable. That is going to be something reachable, not too hypothetic, not just uh, something unreachable. Something that you would like to go one step up. When you clarify this one, you just would like to visualize yourself like that. Okay, you would say, that I would like to be this. The psychologically, you should be ready for that position. 
That is the mindset, okay? You have to have a goal for that one. But later on, the education, training, and then representing yourself, uh, that is going to be the, the, uh, the vehicle which will help you to reach that goal. If you don't have a goal in my, your mind, there is no way that you will be able to uh, reach that, okay? So let's uh, start. Uh, I'm going to explain you guys this uh, concept with the graphical uh, uh, diagrams. I believe it will, you guys are going to like it because it is going to be quick and easy way. So, so let's assume one student. I was like, oh, remember, I, I went through the graduate school. <laughs> I was wondering about if I'm going to find a job or not. I am staying at the school too much. I don't have any experience. Do you think they are gonna hire me? I went through all of this. Okay, I went through all of this. I went in your, I was in your seat. I know how it feels. So uh, the first thing that you have to do while you're in the college, when you're in the school, while you're in the graduate school. So you should at least uh, you have to have a list of three positions. I would like to be this and this and this. Okay, this is up to you. Maybe four. This not shouldn't be too specific. Okay, too specific in that area, in that area. I would like to be uh, something in this area. So this is the position that you have to kind of prepare yourself, okay? So then what? So I have three positions in, in coming five years, in coming four years that I would like to. If you haven't, remember, if you haven't made your decision, you can read the news. Things are changing rapidly. You guys lucky. Why? Because, because there is a huge change towards IT. Why? What is the reason? <laughs> because of the corona, everything is shifting towards IT. Now, an example of this here, we are using IT, okay? So that is a, a, that brings up a big opportunity field for so many people to use it, okay? So I'm just gonna look, and the positions are changing. New, uh, new uh, uh, jobs are showing up. Some old jobs are disappearing. So you are young and you will be able to ready for the new positions, okay? So you're, you're lucky you are number one. Uh, because of the corona, there is a huge change towards IT and remote. And you are lucky number two because you are young and you are lucky number three because you are here in the birthplace of internet. This is the epicenter of internet. 70%, 70% of the worldwide, worldwide internet traffic is passing through our neighborhood, okay? This is the this is where we are. So you're just going to kind of do your search, talk to your friends, talk to your professors, and then try to figure out uh, that two uh, position. And then the next step, they're just gonna look at yourself, okay? So this is yours, you have some skills, okay? Like I put the colors them, okay? So red skills related to that position, number one. Um, the orange uh, uh, squares uh, or uh, graph uh, diagrams indicates uh, something you have related to the position number two, and the green one is indicates as something you have related to position number three. Okay, so you feel comfortable for these positions. Okay, but there are some sections and you don't have that skill at all. This is you. Okay, uh, that diagram indicates you. Then what you are going to do? Let's uh, focus on one position. Okay. So this is the position that I would like to be. So first of all, you have to increase, you have to increase the correlation, correlation between your background, your knowledge, your skills with the position. It's never going to be 100% match, you know that, but it have to, you have to increase the correlation, okay? So you are going to take courses based on that position. You are going to improve your knowledge, improve your skills based on that position, okay? There are some uh, some online tutorials that are available, uh, or you can do certain things by yourself. There are so many resources that are available uh, online as well. Anyway, so you're just going to improve the correlations. How can you do this? Well, you will you'll take courses related to that field, number one. Uh, you will improve yourself by yourself, learning new skills. And another thing is that I highly recommend it, if you have a social media account, if you have your Facebook account, if you have Twitter account, you should be able to following the people in that market, in that position. This is psychologically preparing for that position. So if you have social media accounts, like maybe Twitter or um, Facebook or Instagram, if you have any of these, maybe all of these, so what you need to do is that just follow the market leader in that field. Okay, that will help you to improve yourself about that particular market. 
Okay, and then you will see what they are talking about. You will learn what is the major things that are happening, and especially nowadays. Uh, so we are starting a new year. Everybody in these markets talking about what is new, what is the future in 2021. Okay, so it will it will help you a lot to prepare yourself for the job market. Remember, things are changing rapidly because of the corona, and people shift very fast to from offices to a virtual environment. That is a huge impact. Okay, and uh, it is not going to be uh, same as before. Okay, so people like the idea of working from remote, and the companies they also like the idea of you know, paying less rent. <laughs> and then, um, so that uh, this is, uh, if everything goes clear, if there is no coronavirus at all, let's assume that hypothetically speaking, we are not going to go back to the, the old way of doing business. Okay, people like this idea. And also we are lucky why we have fast networks. We have fast computers and relatively inexpensive, inexpensive, so this is the new era. So why don't you take this opportunity, use this opportunity for your own benefit. So you should be following the uh, important people in the field in your social media accounts, okay? And then when you are getting ready for the market, you are still student, you may have one year or two years, doesn't matter. You should be able to see what kind of positions are available. So you should attend job fairs. I know you cannot apply a job because you are not graduated yet, but why don't you see what they are looking for? Okay, there are virtual, virtual job fairs. Just go there. Yes, you may have a lot of courses to take, but you remember, you have to prepare yourself psychologically, mentally, you should be ready. Okay. And then uh, we will talk about the details of the resume, but uh, uh, resume, it is a kind of um, your outfit. A resume, it is your representative, so it should be 100% clean from any editing errors. Okay, okay so now I, I improve my skills. Let's go one step further, so I'm getting ready for the market. So then my goal is that increase the correlation. Remember, we would like to increase the correlation between my background, which is going to be represented in, um, in, in my resume with the current position. If you have a high correlation, then you are going to have high uh, percentage of acceptance. So let's take a look at this job application process. Okay, it is the resume is not the only one. The resume is not the only one which is going to help you to get the job. The resume is one of the pieces. Number one is that, of course, you have to find the uh, uh, the jobs. You have to find out the, you know the just uh, jobs. You have to utilize that. So job search engines for your own purpose. Try to figure out that. In some, in some job applications, they will ask you to send them an email. You may going to write uh, maybe a cover letter. That is the starting point. Okay, so your email is your first impression. Okay, so while you're in the college, when you are in the in the school, while you are taking graduate courses, why don't you improve your communication skills? And then make sure that your email, it is professional looking email. Okay. Prepare yourself for the market. The next one is, is that now the resume has to be prepared and submitted. Most of the time, your resume is going to go through the filters. Most of the time, uh, depending on the size of the company, uh, a machine, a computer, will scan through your resume and the, the, the computer is going to look at if there is a high correlation or not. And then if everything goes through well, then you will get a call for a job interview. So what is the purpose of resume? What is the why we are preparing resume? The pre we are preparing resume not to get a job. We are preparing resume get the interview. The ultimate goal of the resume is get the interview call. Okay. And that, um, so once you get the re interview call, resume is done, it's job perfectly, just put it aside and then prepare for your job interview. These are the steps, these are the main steps. As you can see, resume just it is just part of the, the process. Okay. Then this is a whole process. Uh, of course, we are going to talk about resume and the details of the resume, how we are going to prepare it, what are the things that you have to be careful about it. Okay. 
Uh, there are three, two different types of resume structure. One of them is the chronological resume, which means that you go through the dates, you set up the, your, your background, your experience based on the dates, so you can go from the most recent to the, go back to the history. The other one is the functional one. It is a little bit more, instead of your, um, your historical background, is, uh, and then you're just gonna uh, flush out, you're just gonna bring it up, your, um, uh, your uh, the things that you have done, the skills that Good you morning. have, is, uh, and then you're just gonna uh, flush out, you're just gonna bring it up, your, um, uh, your uh, the things that you have done, the skills that Good you Good morning. Have. My name is Dr. Hazazi. I don't work with iGlobal anymore, but I didn't know how to stop. So please, if someone can remove me from the list, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So um, resume types, uh, chronological resume, functional resume, both of them works, both of them are good. But um, which one we should use? Uh, the recommended one is that the combination of both. Okay, combination of both. So the examples that you are going to see, it is going to be combination of both resume types. Um, so this is the trend nowadays, okay? So you combine your professional summary and the skills sections uh, as a kind of indicating that you're functional and after that you underneath, underneath you will be able to kind of put the chronological one and also uh, you will put uh, uh, your skills up. Okay. Um, this is the, under the assumption of that uh, no cover letter. If there is going to be a cover letter, your resume is going to be a little bit, little bit different. Not too much, a little bit different. Okay. So in your resume, it is going to be, you know, it is your your card. It is going to be present you, and then um, uh, in your resume, you should be able to present this um, uh, your your communication skills. They are going to check your communication skills uh, uh, while you are in communication with them through the email. And then they are going to check your communication skills in your resume. And also they are going to check your communication skills while you are in job interview. Okay. So they would like to so uh, they would like to see about whether you will come if you will be able to become a good team player. So your resume should be clean from any mistakes. Okay, it has to be clean, not too much, not too crowded. And then, uh, so how are we gonna do this one, okay? So my recommendation is that you do your part, prepare your resume, have someone to edit it for you because you may not gonna see your mistakes. You may not going to see your mistakes, okay? So you may spend hours and hours of time, you prepare your resume, but there is there will be still a small mistake here and there. So seek help, uh, have someone from outside, look at your resume and then uh, do the editing for you, okay? Um, and also when you are communicating via email, uh, please don't make those mistakes when you are making as a student, okay? Um, uh, so this is important. Why you are in the in the school? In the school, you are improving your skills. Okay, you are getting for the ready for the market. So please, at least at least make your email communication within the university as professional as possible. Okay. Another thing is that when you get that when you get that uh, email, when you get some call, uh, so you should be ready for the phone interview. Okay, that they are. Our main focus is here, not job interview. Our main focus is not related to how to talk to the HR people, but keep in mind that is the part of the process. Uh, I believe the iGlobal University will provide you guys another seminar about job interviews. In your resume, you are going to use different sentences. You are going to use uh, catchy words. I'm just gonna uh, um, you know, represent your background. At that point, you should be able to present that you will you are problems you have a problem solving mentality okay um so what kind of solutions that you have provided it's going to be represented in your resume okay and then uh, so um if that is a problem if you what kind of impact that you made okay uh those are the things has to be 
uh, kind of indicated in your resume. Just it, it is not just simple sentence. I used to work as a uh, assistant manager, blah, blah, blah. It means nothing, okay? What would what the impact that you made, okay? You help the company to increase their marketing uh, exposure to 10% uh, more, something like that, okay? And also, uh, if you have, uh, if you have um, experience in social media, okay? If you've taken courses in social media, if you did an internship which needs social media, not just your... Uh, uh, kind of user level uh, Facebook experience, not it's going to be a little bit more. So, so utilizing social media for marketing or uh, for uh, uh, for training purposes. If you have something like this, you can highlight that one because uh, um, companies they uh, they are looking for someone not only is going to do the job but also has kind of experience in social media. By the way, on the near top of the slide, you are going to see the uh, resource where I gather all of this and it's summarized for you guys. If you would like to go deep inside of all of this, you can, you are, you can simply click on that link and then you'll go and read the, all, the, 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 all the details, okay? So uh, when you are writing your e uh, resume, that is a piece of paper at the end. This is going to represent your writing skills, right? So these are the words, action, action verbs that you should be utilizing. In your resume, uh, especially when you are listing your experiences, you're not going to write, I did it, I've done this one. There should be nothing related to I. I. Instead, you will be, you will be utilizing action, action verbs, uh, implemented, performed, executed, collaborated, gathered, joined, uh, merged, and partnered. Those are the things that has to be show up, okay? That is an, an action verb that is going to... That it will help you to it will help you to uh, represent yourself more efficiently. Okay. So in your in your resume, especially in your uh, education and skills and the job uh, experience, uh, we don't want to see any either. Okay. So how are you going to prepare the formatting? Uh, most of the time, you will be writing a Microsoft Word document. Um, so um, it should be maximum two pages, okay? So that is, uh, you have to put everything in two pages. One page is going to be much better, okay? One page is going to be much better, but if you are unable to put, if you are unable to put all your backgrounds in one page, two pages acceptable as well. So um, Microsoft Word, uh, of course, in English, and if if the if the if the company that you're applying for or if the website that you're applying for if they were looking for a specific format of the document if they said that we really want this for example if they said that we want a pdf document it has to be converted into ptf if it is not a kind of uh, indication like that if it is not kind of there is a there is no rule like this then you just keep it simple um make it Microsoft Word document. Uh, another thing is that, uh, let me put here. Another thing is that when you're naming your document, you have to be careful, okay? So don't do this. Okay, this is not good. This is not good. Okay, because if you name it like this, let's make it. Uh, if it is something like this, uh, if you <laughs> like this, uh, so how many people are applying at that job? That is not. You are not the only one. If you name it like this, there may be other people naming like that. A poor employee when they download your file, uh, your resume, it is going to overlap with others. And they may not gonna find you later on. So your resume has to be specific. Okay, uh, we can make it like this. Okay, you can put your last name in the resume. That is going to be acceptable. Or you can say that resume, for example, uh, to twenty one. This is another acceptable way to name your document. To name your document. But never, never make it just simple resume, okay? So this is another way 
to name it or something related to your background or you can put your first name first name last name and a resume 2021 uh, be careful about that because a simple just naming resume it is terrible idea it's a terrible idea okay and then uh, the margins should be 0.7 inches uh, you can easily adjust the margins in your microsoft Word document and then um, so you have to make it kind of easy to read paper easy to read paper if you put so many things that it is going to be crowded and um, they have they are not going to allocate 10 minutes to read your resume at the first glance okay if it is going to go through the machine machine is just going to look at the the words the machine is going to look at if there is any correlation or not the machine is going to pick up the uh, some selected words and then it's going to compare with the job position if it is going to be a review by an hr department they are simply going to look at it whether you fulfill the minimum requirements or not they don't go details if you put so many things that unrelated stuff uh, they said i cannot understand what this guy talked about they will put your resume aside not good okay it has to be nice and clean and you are going to on the top of uh, 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 just going to kind of talk uh, representing and the, the main section which is going to be related for the job so resume has to be easy to read document i'll show you guys some examples some people and uh, i did these mistakes when I, said when I was in the graduate school they have a, a microsoft skills they know microsoft words and so on and so forth they try to put some kind of uh, extra design make a complex design that is not a good idea folks they are not, you are not there to impress them your microsoft Word skills and some cases it may be a distraction okay putting decorations here and there uh putting too much color here and there um not a good idea sorry not a good idea remember your resume either is going to be scanned by a computer or going to be scanned by a, a chat person when your resume pass through all of this then after that it will go to the your uh, immediate manager okay so you have to pass the first section of it okay you may be the good person you may have the good skills but if you are unable to put them a proper format they're not going to pass through the first filtering okay uh so make it nice and clean and plain plain vanilla okay so don't push too much don't put too much colors and graphics and so on and so forth and then as i mentioned to you guys before your resume is going to be something one or two pages not more than two pages i'm talking to the graduate students right now if there is a professional person if you are applying a professional uh, one that is going to be a different story okay so what are the well let's go a little bit details on preparing a resume number one rule is that resume it's not cv i know this is a confusion it's a little bit confusing uh because uh, in overseas in some uh, countries they use cv uh but they are preparing resume okay in united states resume is not equal to cv cv it is more detailed cv usually will ask for upper level high level positions and cvs are like line of two or three five maybe it can go to the 10 pages okay uh so that person has to put everything that and that person is a professional person has so many skills behind it so we don't call it cv in the united states we call it resume okay and um, your resume you may have your resume you may have uh, you may came from another country here um, that resume that you prepare in, uh, in your own home country may be good for that country but in the united states it is not okay for example european union they have their own resume template so if you are in one of these countries in European Union, you're just going to follow the template, just going to plug it in your uh, your background in that template and send it out. We don't have something like this. OK, you have to prepare. Your so in your resume, you should not put any pictures. This is um, uh, not welcome. It is not accepted and then not, uh, it is not good because um, uh, it may go to the uh, discrimination. And then you are not going to write anything about your age, uh, whether you are married or not, or how many kids you have. They are not asked, or you should not present them in your resume. It goes to the discrimination. They cannot select you because you have married and the kids. That is a discrimination. Okay. 
they should be selecting you if you have the uh, the skills and the education to fulfill the requirements of the job. It doesn't matter who you are. What matters is that whether you are the right candidate to do the job on time. Okay. Okay. So uh, one more time. Is, so your resume. It is good. You, you should be preparing three resumes if you are applying three different positions. You are just gonna tailor towards that position. Okay. You are gonna highlight some section. It does not mean that uh, two resumes. It's not. It is going to be totally different. No, maybe they are going to be, uh, they are going to be 84, 85% same, maybe 90% identical, but you have to put that uh, touch there. You have to make sure that it is going to be a kind of for that position. Okay, so your resume should pass through the initial filtering, the computers and HR, and should be at least two pages. Let's take a look at the main components of the resume. Let's take a look at the main components of the resume. Of course, you have to have a contact information on the top of the resume. Again, this is US format. You don't have any picture, nothing like that. And then if the entity that you are applying, if the company that you are applying for, if they are not, if they are not asking for a cover letter, if they are not asking for a cover letter, so you are going to put a professional summary there. If the company is asking for a cover letter, you don't need to do the professional summary there. So for entry level jobs, most of the time, uh, they are not asking cover letter. And you are going to have a section about your education, your training. And after that, next session is going to work experience. And if you have other uh, additional experience, you can also list them there if you have a space <laughs> and your skills. And if you have language skills, yes, you can present them as well. This is uh, the order is kind of generally accepted order. There may be a little bit change here and there, but most of the time, this order, this structure, it is going to be fine for you when you're preparing your resume. Okay, let's go individual sections and see how we are gonna do this. Number one, um, so the contact information. By the way, in the meantime, uh, start to build your LinkedIn, okay? And then you can put everything that, so then, um, some some employees will ask you to send them your LinkedIn account. Your social media accounts becomes important, by the way. Uh, so when you are applying a job, um, of course, uh, when you pass your initial filtering, when you are in that short list of the uh, possible employees, they will also do a little bit search about your you, and then they will go your Facebook account. Okay, uh, they will look at your social media accounts. It is important. Okay. You have to prepare yourself for the professional life. So your social media, the things that you are in the social media has to be related to that field, has to be related to that field. Okay? Uh, so use that power and then improve your uh, marketing, your impure marketing exposure. Okay. Contact information. Of course, your, your name, uh, your last name. And then uh, some students, I don't know why, uh, <laughs> they are putting two emails. Um, forget about that one. Uh, you are not going to impress them how many emails you have. Okay, <laughs> you should put that something they can easily contact you. Another experience I had: a student had one email. He 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 had that email during his uh, high school years. This is a funny email address. It was funny for him. It was what email address, something related to his favorite soccer player, something like that. Anyway, he's still using that one. And he's going to use that funny email address for professional job application. Sorry, it's not going to work. If you, if you don't have a kind of little bit professional looking email address, get one right away from, from, uh, from uh, Gmail. For example, I just made one John dot stone it for example or just put your name there something like that and you may have a email you can use that email address for job applications okay uh, that your email address has to be uh, uh, something related to you it is not um, not you know, just simple uh, random characters and the names or your your favorite hero it's not like that just make it professional and then uh, when you're writing your phone number, you should clarify that your area code and also the number set in this format. 
Um, if you have a WhatsApp, if that if that phone number is just connected to WhatsApp, you can uh, say, indicate that it's a WhatsApp number as well. Another thing is that this is most of the time a big concern from the students and uh, uh, students not putting it's a uh, students not putting <clears throat> any indicator that where that person is. Okay, and then the companies they are nowadays uh, um, they would like to hire from United States. <laughs> And they would like to hire a person who can write here and you don't they don't they are not going to pay too much money extra money for that person to relocate so you have to indicate that you are in united states okay uh, if you want you can put your full address there or if you are uh, hesitant about the, you don't want to put the full address that is why that is understandable you are going to put the state and city where you are in okay this indicate that you are in the in that neighborhood. Okay, just uh, it has to be done because the companies are receiving so many emails from here and that they are not going to see that. Oh, this guy's local guy. Let's give this person an advantage. Okay, so you have to use your location. You have to use your location and indicate that um, you are actually a local person. Okay, the next step is that. Um, uh, professional summary uh, for the LinkedIn, for example, it is not recommended to put your full name, full address there. For the LinkedIn and social media accounts, it is not recommended to put your full address there. But you can indicate your location, your city, and the state. When it comes to the professional summary, this is something that you would like to uh, kind of bring it up. This is something that you would like to highlight. This is something from your background is related to job okay so therefore this professional summary it is going to be updated it should be updated based on each job application it is not going to be too long it is going to be very brief uh, maybe two or three sentences uh it's a kind of uh, uh it is something uh, uh why they should look at you it is something it is about your background and related to that particular position Okay. The next one in the list is going to be education. In education, uh, you don't need to put your high school. Okay, you, uh, we are not looking for that one. So you will be starting from the most recent one first. So you are at here at Igloo University. Just put that one on top. Master of Science in I, um, uh, IT, MSIT, Igloo University. The address you can put the website as well, and you can put your GPA there. Okay. Underneath, you can put your bachelor's degree. Uh, you have to indicate uh, the name of the university that you get your bachelor's degree and the country, of course, and your GPA there. I know some countries, they have different grading system. So if you are not comfortable with your GPA, don't put it there, okay? Um, because some countries are not work, not uh, their grading system not based on four. It is based on 100. And in some countries, it is really, really difficult to get 100 over 100. Okay, um, so you may you you may be the 80 over 100, and uh, you may be the, the best student in the class. <laughs> but if you put it there, people misunderstand you. Okay, because in United States, 80 it's a B. Okay, but in your your home country, 80 it is the best grade in the class. Okay, so at that point you have to if you if you have training you can put it here as well training has to go to the education so you can say that education and training it has to be under the same uh, category so it is going to be uh, listed here what kind of training were and where did you get it and any certifications that you get it's going to be there and also certified institutions has to be also highlighted there okay. and the next one is the experience this is another area students are struggling to represent uh, so this is a chronological part. So you'll be, you'll be starting from the most recent job experience. Okay, most recent, just gonna go back like that. And then when you are listing your job experience, you're just gonna put the title. You are gonna put the title and the position first. Okay, and the dates. And after that, you will talk about the company info, where the company is located, or you can put the website of the company as well. Okay. So uh, remember, the first thing is that not the company name. First thing is that your 
particular position that your title, what you have done there, that is the uh, given title to you, and also the dates. This is important. Then after that, you're simply going to go and list uh, the functions that you fulfill there. Okay. So you are talking about uh, maximum six bullet points, six maximum, six, no less than three. And here is that you are going to use that action verbs here. Okay. Uh, you should be specific about uh, the things that you have done, not just general statements. And if you use a software, you should indicate what kind of uh, software that you use and uh, maybe the version number. Or if you are a, if you are part of a team, what was the size of the team? Or what was the impact? What was the impact of that team uh, overall company's uh, um, uh, budget? So those are the things going to be there. Remember, resume is an indicator. It is going to be indicator of your potential. It is going to be uh, presentation of your potential to the employees. Okay. Um, so, of course, the duration of your employment there, the team size, so how many people you guys are, 5, 10, 20, the size of the project means, means that how much money that project involved. So, all of them, it has to be represented there. You may not be the team leader, you may just uh, maybe answer points job, but that team of the team was consists of 10 people. And you were dealing with half million dollar project. So you are not in charge of the half million dollar project, but you were among them. So which means that you were a good guy, you had the skills, people trust you. People trust you and have you to become that big uh, team, and then you were, you guys will be, and I mean, you have been. Uh, dealing with big money issues. So that is going to be another potential indicator. Okay. So how many experiences you have, you're just going to put it there. How many companies that you engage with, you're just going to put it there to the experience. Some experiences uh, may not be 100% related to IT, but you have to put it there. Okay. Um, you may work um, as a, in a retail business. You can put it there. Retail business, uh, because you are, you are just right out of college, um, while you are applying jobs here and there, you start to work in a retail business. That is good, because it indicates that, uh, number one, a company hire you, they like you, and also you know how to work in, a, in that environment. That is going to be a, a positive from your side, positive indicator of your potential. Okay. Then, towards the end, you will put your skills. These are the skills that you learn. Either you can learn by self, you may be attending a free online courses, then you get a certificate there. Or if you have something like this, you should be able to put it there, the skills. And then you cannot simply say that I know C++ programming, okay? What level? What level? Okay. Um, okay, so I use Java programming, Java programming skills. Yeah, a person spends two hours, there's that person start to do Java programming. <laughs> okay. But if the other person has spent two years and Java development, Java programming, it's going to be different, right? So if you have that kind of background, you may you will be able to put it that with the time, with the uh, level and that uh, and duration and the level that is going to be important. If you have a, a foreign language skills, you can you can put it there. You can put it underneath of the skills, or you can put a language skills section, and then you should indicate the, what kind of languages you know and what level, what level. Okay. Um, so you may have another. Uh, you may know maybe more than one language. Some students I know that they they know two or three languages when they arrive in the United States. And then so in the language uh, uh, section, you're just going to indicate the level of proficiency for each language. Okay. So well, now you're prepared. Let's take a look at some of the examples here. Some of the examples. These are from the market, just share with you guys. Let's take a look at this. So here is a, a, a section. Uh, this section is that uh, kind of uh, name is going to go here. And here is that address and the email. Okay. Um, there are different, I'm not going to go to details of formatting. This is one formatting that may be ended. So here is that that person put his kind of uh, his. Uh, uh, professional summary here and the technical skills goes there. Okay, so a nice listing. So it categorized the 
uh, categorize the uh, uh, skills, uh, but there is something missing here, okay? Uh, so that person should indicate that uh, the level of expertise, uh, for example, that uh, Windows XP, what is that? Windows XP, everybody uh, at that time, so you say Windows 10, everybody sits in front, of, in front of the Windows 10, they already know it, but can you go and deep inside of Windows 10, okay? Uh, and here is that, uh, for example, Kali, this person put Kali, Kali is a Unispace operating system which was specially tailored towards cybersecurity. Okay, so what level of Kali that you know? Downloading Kali takes uh, around 10 minutes. And you're clicking here and that, do you think you'll be able to put that? I know Kali. <laughs> okay, so uh, to be able to, uh, uh, kind of a little bit on, um, on the top list, you should be able to put experience. So here's an example of how we are going to represent, how we are going to write your professional experience. So here is that uh, um, security professional. This is, uh, this is, I don't recommend, it has to be the security operations center. Security analyst has to be that first because they are first looking at your function, not the company, okay? And here is that the location and the date. And then what we have here that the three bullet points, three, four, five, you can go up to the six, and it goes like this. I'm oh, sorry. And, and then education. Education, we cannot see the education. Yeah, we cannot see the education part. Anyway, let's go to the next one. So this is, as you can see, there is a little bit designing here. Some companies, they like this one, but uh, remember, eventually, uh, design has to be clean and can be can be read very easily. This is his name, and then here is that. Uh, you can see there is no street address here in this particular one. So just the city and state, and uh, the phone number, and then uh, emails and everything. And then here is that uh, is simply kind of this guy is representing his uh, uh, kind of skills here. This is a professional statement that indicates that this is who, this person probably applying a job in the web developer part. He's putting that thing is up front, and then technical toolbox. So he's indicating what kind of programs as an experience with, and then uh, education. So education right comes here after that. So and then uh, here is that he is highlighting some of the courses that uh, was taking which is related to position. And after that, simply the work experience here is that uh, the, he has to work as a web developer and simply listing, listing his uh, functions there. Take a look at another one here. Uh, okay, name, address, and then of course the phone, uh, email address is missing here. So experience here is the title and then uh, then of course uh, they have to put the company. This is the location of the company and the date. Here is another one uh, title, and um, there there should be a company name here. This is company name is missing. Okay, and this goes like that. Let's take a look at another one. Okay, so the name, address, and email, everything is good. Summary here is the summary. Again, this summary has to be related to position. Uh, that you're applying highlights. This is good. This is good. So I would like to kind of uh, putting them here. Uh, again, this is kind of trying to see correlation. And then here is that uh, the job experience. Okay. Okay. Uh, so software tester, work as a software tester, software tester. And then these are the dates and times. And then um, what he has done. Again, all of them is action verbs here, verbs. And then let's take a look at another one here. Okay, nice start. Uh, address and the email. This is summary part, good. The highlights part and experience that. I like this uh, one. So the first thing he's writing that he is the, the position that that person fulfilled that. It is an indication of the position, the function, okay? The company will come later on. And then the date. And, this, and the location, 
Uh, and also, as you can see here, in a bullet, bullet, bullet point format, that person indicating what uh, he or she has done that achieved that. It goes like that. As education is uh, a little bit short, and then uh, there's a certification, so I get a certification. This is probably, among all of these at VMC, this is kind of the best one I can tell you guys, okay? And uh, nowadays, uh, there are some templates that are available. This is nice uh, uh, design. Um, this will also work. Uh, this is graphical, and then um, it takes a little bit more time to prepare it. Uh, the, look at this one, very nice personal info, the name. And here is that, uh, just indicating, uh, just IT consultant, four plus years experience. This is the nice addressing part, but this person has put the exact address. Uh, it is acceptable. And then here is that um, the skills, uh, it's a nice clear indicated. So, so agile development is a closer to advanced level. Um, data synchronizations, uh, working proficiency, and the languages are here. And the education and the certifications. If you look at the experience section, you will see the same thing. Uh, nice starting from the position and the company, position and the company, okay? You can find ready to use this kind of templates. You can find them ready to use uh, uh, an online uh, platform. You can develop by yourself. Uh, this is a nice clean one. As you can see, there is no picture, no birth date, no uh, anything, uh, personal details. And then, uh, and then you will be able to submit this one. That is pretty much it from my side. So let me go up and show you guys the Where is it? Okay, um, sorry. Okay. So this is going to be the, your skeleton. This is going to be the skeleton your or resume. So I'm gonna stop here. If you have a question, uh, I'll be more than happy to help. Okay. If you um, if you don't have a question, I believe this is going. This is recorded, and we'll be able to provide it to you. If you have a resume, if you have a resume, if you want, I can take a look at it. My email was provided as well. Uh, I can take a look. I can provide me a feedback. Or if you, then maybe we can put, uh, we can do a, a go to meeting and I will talk live and then I'll provide my feedback to you. Okay. So now it is, I'm going to stop here. It is your time. It is, if you want, you can talk. If you want, you can use the chat room. Hi, I have a question, sir. Please. Yes, I know at the beginning you did say we should have a clear goal. And, you know, well, sometimes, I don't know if I, I'm speaking for myself or if other people can relate, but sometimes you might be caught between, you know, deciding if you want to, like, um, go into a specific field in IT or you want to, like, currently, I am, because of my current position, like what actually influenced me to doing masters in IT. Originally, I was interested in masters in cybersecurity, but then when I got into my current position, there's somebody from my home country who is doing very well in my company, and who like um, I asked him about his job role and how he was able to get there, and he suggested, okay, when you do your masters in IT, you can specialize in the software management parts that can help you move to where uh, what I'm currently doing. But then I still kind of have interest in interest in like um, cybersecurity too. So sometimes I just get caught between like, oh, should I should I um, go towards this and that? Then besides that, there's um like an internship program that someone told me about, which is in cybersecurity too. And I'm thinking of okay applying for this internship program because that would also help me decide at the end of the, um, my you know. Uh, it can help me decide whether I to switch to cybersecurity or stay in my current um. Um, as in staying okay, uh, continuing IT, yeah. So, okay, quick question: uh, um, Do you know anything about cybersecurity? Do you know how it looks like? Do you know what kind of things that you will be doing there? Not just the name of the cybersecurity. There are so many resources. Did you look at them? How it looks like? 
Um, yes, like in my home country, where before I moved to the US, the, I actually worked in a company where I was going to switch to the um, security team. Okay. And that made me take like some two fundamental courses in security. But just around the time I was supposed to switch was when I moved here. So I wasn't able to continue, but I do kind of have an interest in that. Okay. So then you are, you are in a good position because eventually you are going to do something such a long time. The, uh, the position that you're going to select is going to be part of your life. It, you should like the subject. Okay. okay. The subject that you feel comfortable, the subject that you said, I really want this one. I found this subject more interesting, that one, because if you don't like the subject, if you don't like the subject and you get a job and then uh, later you realize that, yeah, I, I am. I'm earning money here, but I really hate this job. I don't like this one. That is going to be a big problem for you in the long term. So I went through this one. I went lent a job. It was paying well, but I, I realized it wasn't for me. <laughs> I didn't I don't like the job, but I wasn't telling to anybody because um, I'm, I don't want to lose my job. But okay. uh, Eventually, uh, uh, so when you land the job uh, that you really liked it, so then you are not working, you are enjoying. So you really want to do the things. So the, when you wake up and the first thing in the morning, you just really want to do that one. Actually, that is your job and becomes your life. Otherwise, your life is going to be really miserable. Okay. Again, right, don't, so worry about the market. don't worry about the market. There are job positions that are available, will be available uh, okay. in the consideration of this uh, corona and then moving so many things out of the building and the people homes and the residential units it means that it is coming if there is an it there is going to be cyber security okay um then another question is if you like applying for an internship program and um because like say for instance i'm doing like like now that i'm saying the internship program is um, is in cyber security and it's something i'm actually interested in so how do i um, prepare my resume to i mean to at least get an interview because so far i haven't really had like a background besides the certifications i took in um, security if you if you um i am cyber security certified um so i went through the, all of this if you send me an email i'll take a look at it okay um, and then we'll, we'll, uh, I'll provide you feedback more specifically for your cybersecurity questions. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.